You know, if you've got kids, the last couple of years, you've probably been forced to watch the movie Frozen like a gazillion times. But what with me being a scientist and all, this got me to thinking, how cold is cold? Is there a coldest temperature possible? And if so, how close have scientists gotten to having achieved it? These are all interesting questions with fascinating answers. So let's look into it. And I promise I won't break out into song. Well, okay, maybe at the end. If we're going to talk about cold, we need to talk about temperature scales. Americans are familiar with the Fahrenheit scale, which sets the freezing and boiling points of water to be 32 and 212 degrees, respectively. Most of the rest of the world uses the Celsius or centigrade scale and sets those points at 0 and 100 degrees. Because there's nothing unique about water as a chemical beyond being familiar, there's really nothing special about either way to report temperatures. However, there is a scale, called the Kelvin scale after Lord Kelvin, that is much more natural. To start with, Kelvin postulated that there was a coldest possible temperature. Thinking on a molecular or atomic scale, the coldest possible temperature would be the one in which the motion of the atoms was at an absolute minimum. Classically, we'd say that this temperature is when molecules inside the object weren't moving at all, although the quantum picture is a little different. Physicists use the Kelvin scale for most things. In the Kelvin scale, this lowest temperature, which is called absolute zero, by the way, is defined to be zero. Zero degrees Kelvin is equal to minus 273.15 degrees Celsius and minus 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit. And to be complete, in the Kelvin scale, water freezes at 273.15 and boils at 373.15 Kelvin. Okay, with those scales defined, how close can we get to absolute zero? Is it merely an ideal or is it achievable? Well, let's think of some ridiculously cold things, like the temperature Fermilab gets in the dead of a particularly harsh winter. The recorded coldest temperature in the laboratory's vicinity is minus 36 degrees Fahrenheit, which is minus 37.8 degrees Celsius and 235.37 Kelvin. 235.37 is way higher than zero, so we're going to have to get much colder than that. What about the coldest recorded temperature in Earth out in nature? That was back in 1983 in Antarctica, when the temperature hit a bone-chilling negative 128.5 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 89.2 degrees Celsius and 184 Kelvin. Still a long way to go to absolute zero. What about liquid nitrogen, which is what you get when the dominant substance in ordinary air is chilled until it's liquid? That's colder, coming in at minus 320.4 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 195.8 degrees Celsius and 77 Kelvin. That's better, but we're not there yet. All right, let's get serious. Helium is the gas that fills children's balloons. However, it can be cooled until it's a liquid. That happens at minus 452.2 degrees Fahrenheit, minus 269 degrees centigrade, and 4.2 Kelvin. And that is about the temperature at which the Fermilab Tevatron operated until it was decommissioned in 2011. So this is great. We've gotten into single-digit temperatures, but of course, 4-ish Kelvin isn't the same as zero. So can we do better? Well, sure. 4.2 Kelvin is the temperature at which helium condenses from gas to liquid. The temperature at which water condenses from gas to liquid is 100 Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit, and we know we can cool water below that temperature. We should be able to get helium colder than the temperature at which it boils. Using the same conceptual tricks that we use to run commercial refrigerators and freezers, we can cool helium more. At CERN, our sister laboratory over in Europe, they've built a huge ring of magnets that is 27 kilometers, or 16 plus miles around, down to 1.9 Kelvin. It's hard work, but we can make big things very cold. Using this advanced refrigeration technology, we can get things down to something like 1 Kelvin. 
1-ish Kelvin is the lowest temperature you can do on an industrial scale. To go lower, we need to do some new tricks. At such low temperatures, helium does some funny things. For instance, normal helium, like you might find in a party balloon, is called helium-4 because it has four particles in the nucleus, two protons and two neutrons. On the other hand, there is a version of helium called helium-3, which has two protons and one neutron. Helium-4 can be extracted from natural gas, but helium-3 is rare on Earth. Luckily, it's a byproduct of nuclear power generation. Helium-3 and helium-4 have very different properties, especially at temperatures just under 1 Kelvin. If you put them in a container, the two liquids separate into two layers. Then, and slowly, a bit of the helium-3 diffuses into the helium-4, which carries away some energy, and that can cool the remaining helium-4 even colder. This technology is called dilution refrigeration, and it was proposed back in the 1950s and first demonstrated in 1964 at Leiden University in the Netherlands. Dilution refrigerators can cool objects quite a bit colder. The physical limit using dilution refrigeration is about 2 millikelvin, which is 0.002 kelvin. That's close enough to absolute zero that I'm not going to keep giving the Fahrenheit and Celsius numbers. And these dilution refrigerators can be super pretty, as you can see here. This one is located at Fermilab, and it operates at 5.5 millikelvin. By the way, I say that the 2 millikelvin limit is a physical one because at about 2 millikelvin, helium-3 changes phase and that diffusion trick no longer works. Since that trick is the one we rely on to make continuous-use refrigerators, that's as cold as we can go for what we might call physical objects, that is to say things big enough for humans to touch and manipulate. Because of the need for super cold temperatures to do quantum computing, bigger dilution refrigerators are being built. IBM and others are building big ones that should operate at temperatures under 20 millikelvin, and my colleagues at Fermilab are building a big dilution refrigerator, over 2 meters in diameter, big enough that they call it Colossus, that will operate in the 10 to 20 millikelvin range. Now, the millikelvin range is about the lowest we can go if you want to cool an actual object and do some sort of laboratory-sized thing. But it is possible to cool small numbers of atoms to even lower temperatures. That is done to study the nature of matter very, very close to absolute zero. Using magnets to align the spin of atomic nuclei and lasers to reject fast-moving atoms, it's possible to cool relatively small numbers of atoms to a microkelvin, that is to say a millionth of a degree above absolute zero. Scientists at the National Institute of Standards and Technology and other facilities routinely achieve that, and often into the nanokelvin range, which is a billionth of a degree above absolute zero. And the current record is held by a group of European scientists who, in 2021, used every trick in the book to cool 100,000 rubidium atoms to 38 picokelvin. That's 38 trillionths of a kelvin. They held the temperature for about 10 seconds. That's just ridiculously cold. So that's in the lab. What's the coldest thing in the natural universe? Well, if we look at the temperature of space itself, we see that it's a relatively balmy 2.7 Kelvin. And even the coldest spot ever observed in the universe is the Boomerang Nebula, which has a temperature of about 1 Kelvin. Okay, is 38 picokelvin the limit? Well, no, probably not. Scientists are cleverer after all. However, what about literally, exactly, absolute zero? Is that achievable, and what happens then? Well, if we could reach absolute zero, that would mean that the molecules and atoms would not be moving, and they would settle down into a completely orderly configuration. However, quantum mechanics doesn't allow for objects to be simultaneously stationary and precisely located. This means that there is always some small quantum motion, and thus absolute zero is an unachievable goal. Now, you may have heard about negative temperatures on the Kelvin scale, and they exist. But the meaning of temperature is very different in that realm. For instance, one mind-bending fact is that all negative temperatures are hotter than positive temperatures. And I say that because if you have an object with negative temperatures and touch it to an object with positive temperatures, the energy from the negative temperature object will flow into the positive temperature one. Negative temperatures are just messed up, and to explain them would take its own video. 
They're just like weird, man. So there we go. That's how cold we can go. The coldest natural place in the universe is just a single degree Kelvin above absolute zero. In the lab, the coldest we can make industrial scale things is a Kelvin or so. The lowest range of laboratory scale things is a couple of millikelvin. And if we want to study a small number of atoms, we can achieve temperatures as low as a nano Kelvin or even as low as a few tens of picokelvin. Zero is impossible and negative temperatures will bend your brain. Okay, so that's a quick look into how cold things can get. I think what this all boils down to is don't complain next winter about how cold it is. It could be way, way, way worse. All right, you know the drill. Please subscribe to the channel. You do that by poking that button down there. If you do, I'll keep making more physics videos, which is what all of us want, right? And physics videos are where it's at because, after all, physics is everything. All right, what do you think, Ian? Can I sing that song now? Uh, yeah, we just ran out of time. Sorry. Oh, no. Gotta nah, cut. no, no, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna do it. I'm yeah, gonna do it. I they, they want it. I they gotta cut, it. though, Don. Uh, Sorry, uh, yeah. yeah.